Crazy Taxi was one of the first games I ever played as a kid, spending far too much time whizzing around its condensed take on California on my Dreamcast, when I wasn't playing Sonic Adventure. It's a pretty formative game for me. If you're here watching this review, I assume you had a similar experience or at least get the idea of what Crazy Taxi was all about. Unfortunately, as the years have passed, Crazy Taxi has largely faded away aside from an occasional spin-off here and there that kinda do their own things, so naturally when I found out about Taxi Chaos from GS2 Games and Lion Castle, I followed it with great interest, and the publisher actually very kindly provided me with a Switch copy of the game to play and share my thoughts on. When it comes to spiritual successors to classic games, I try to avoid comparing them too much to their original inspirations, but between the title of the game and the juxtaposition of each game's key art, I mean, look at this. I'll be comparing a lot here, sorry in advance. So let's just get to the question in the title. Should you buy Taxi Chaos? The answer is, in my opinion, yes. On a sale. The game released today on Switch, Xbox platforms, and PlayStation platforms and judging by the Xbox Store, seems to retail for $30 here in the States. That's about how much the physical versions for Switch and PS4 are retailing for also, if you happen to want a copy for yourself. So why do I say wait for a sale? Is the game bad, you might ask? I don't think it is, but unfortunately there's just not enough here to justify the price, whether it be in terms of content or polish. But I have to say, I was still surprised by Taxi Chaos. I have quite a lot of small nitpicks with it that did add up, but I do think it is ultimately a fun game. I should also say that my review is based on an early copy and a patch is meant to be hitting PlayStation and Xbox today and Switch in a few weeks that should address some of these nitpicks too, uh, in theory at least. So if you're watching this video a few weeks later, I'll update some things down below in a pinned comment. So let's talk about the basics. In Taxi Chaos, you can pick from one of two drivers, Vinny or uh, Cleo? and hop into one of seven cabs, with six of them needing to be unlocked through first meeting various gameplay requirements. You'll then go and drive through New Yellow City, which is a smaller version of New York City. You'll then need to stop, pick up customers, and take them to various points throughout the game world, from caricatures of Times Square to more general locales like a helipad or the Roach Dive Hotel. Along the way, you can dodge through traffic, jump over obstacles and off of ramps, and weave through shortcuts to try and build up a combo meter to rake in more cash for your fare all the while on a timer that gets added to as you pick up and drop off passengers. That's pretty much the long and short of it. It's very, very similar to Crazy Taxi. In fact, if you're more familiar with Crazy Taxi 2, you might feel right at home here with the setting and jumps you can pull off. Broadly, this is all great. What really surprised me about Taxi Chaos is how it feels to control the taxis. I think the game strikes a pretty good balance between some of the wilder antics you'd expect from this style of game, while still controlling pretty well all in all. There are some little annoyances, like I, I do wish drifting felt better, particularly in tight turns, and the loss of speed after landing from a jump is a real shame, but by and large, Taxi Chaos feels pretty nice to play. It's just arcadey enough without some of the bad quirks Crazy Taxi could exhibit sometimes. It's almost a shame that New York City is the chosen location here, as I'd be interested in driving in more varied terrain, especially with more slopes and windy roads. That is one downside of things, and unfortunately there is only one map to play on. It's a pretty decently sized map, not too big and not too small, but for a $30 game I'd expect at least another one to mess around in. And this is where I have to start going into my list of critiques also. The game has a variety of passengers with different personalities, with male and female versions of them sometimes reading the same lines. In Taxi Chaos, the passengers are more chatty, talking to your driver as you take them along about various things, through destination, general back and forth, things to do in this city, you know, that kind of thing. On paper, this is a nice idea, and it's actually a pretty neat little addition at first. But it backfired for me very quickly, as I just happened to have the same exchange nearly back to back three times in my first 15 minutes of play. The vocal performances range from decent to unprofessional sounding, try to get as many customers before your shift ends, and some of the writing is just groan inducing. There's a hipster archetype who will tell you that oh, he, he doesn't like to take the subway, it's, it's too underground. And he'll say like, oh, you probably haven't heard of this place that they want you to take them to. It's pretty harmless all in all though. Fortunately, there is a voice sound slider, so you can just mute the voices if it bothers you. I also have to be fair, once in a while the dialogue got me to laugh. 
There's a line where Vinny was talking about his kids, then mentions that he has a photo album of them in the back seat for his passengers to look through. <laughs> I can't decide if that's incredibly bizarre or endearingly sincere, but the thought still makes me laugh, so again, it's not all bad. Another neat thing is that there are actual named characters who have little storylines you can follow through as you pick them up and drop them off. These are tied to the game's collectibles. This was a little confusing at first as I thought it meant these would be items scattered around the map, but you just seem to get them from dropping these customers off based on my experience so far. It's another neat idea, but you don't really know you're picking up one of these passengers until they start speaking. You do all of this driving in one of three modes, Arcade, Pro, and Free Roam. Arcade gives you the timed experience, as described earlier, and Pro gives you the same experience, but turns off your GPS arrow. This is actually a pretty cool idea for a challenge, and is one I have been failing miserably at. You don't realize how much you rely on the GPS until it's taken away. To help with that, Free Roam is your third option, and it lets you drive around the city to your leisure with no time limit, free to learn the city and its ins and outs with no pressure. This is actually a mode I always wanted in the original Crazy Taxi growing up, so I was pretty pleased to see this here. There are also some leaderboards and in-game achievements you can gun for, but in terms of content, what you see is what you get here. As you may have noticed, the game performance isn't as rock solid as it could be. This might be a Switch specific issue, but it feels like the game couldn't quite compromise between a consistent image quality or a consistent frame rate, but it doesn't quite go all in on a specific direction either. There's a lot of pop in, whether docked or undocked. Shadows appear when close sometimes, there's not much traffic or many pedestrians, yet the game still feels like it's hitting the lower 20s in terms of frame rate. I didn't find the lower frame rate impacted my ability or any gameplay situations specifically, but the pop-in was actively distracting at times, especially in grassy fields. Again, on stronger consoles this may not be an issue, but it's worth pointing out if performance is a deciding factor between different versions for you. Again, doesn't impact gameplay much, but I'd love to see this ironed out some for the Switch. Enough doesn't load in sometimes, and it kind of makes the game look overly plain. It's strange, as other times I think it manages to look pleasant, and it's a weird contrast. Okay, I won't delay anymore. The music was a quintessential part of Crazy Taxi, and I know you're wondering what the situation is here. The news isn't great, though. A lot of the music is lower-key electronic and techno music, and I think it's an outright bad match for the game. Not because it isn't late 90s punk specifically, but it just doesn't bring the energy needed for an arcade-like experience found here. The action can be chaotic, but the soundscape feels like more of a club warm-up track than a fever pitch banger. During the few times you do find yourself just driving straight through the city, it can make you aware of how little is happening on certain roads. On top of that, the music tracks themselves can sometimes last longer than a play session, and then continue playing out to the menu, and sometimes when you get back into the gameplay. It just doesn't feel very cohesive. Uh, this is really specific, but it reminds me of when I'd hook up custom playlists on Xbox 360 and the music would just play through games like Forza Horizon. Um, an email from the developer did say they're planning to add 11 rock songs in the day one patch, though I have no idea of which ones, so I wasn't able to assess if they could help the mood by this review's publishing. There were also some bugs I ran into during my playtime, such as clipping through the ground after landing from a jump, Passengers telling me a few different times their destination after they already had, things like that. Though in that same email I mentioned, these are problems the developer intends to patch, and they happen pretty infrequently at that, but it's worth mentioning. So that's more or less the basics of Taxi Chaos. I'm impressed by how well it gets some of the foundation of Crazy Taxi right. I truly do think the driving feels great, and while I wish less of the city was just flat square streets, when you do some exploring in the nooks and crannies, there are some decent shortcuts to be found to help keep things varied. But I just don't think the game as a package holds up well in light of its price tag. At half off, it'd be an easier recommendation, but between the game's switch performance, tonal imbalance, repetitive dialogue, and frankly just how little it offers, it's hard for me to say anyone but a diehard Crazy Taxi fan should buy in. A downfall of aligning a game so closely to a classic title is that it draws a lot of comparisons, and can leave a player feeling wanting by the end if enough falls short of their memories of the older game. With another map or two, even if set in New Yellow City again, I think there could be something here, but otherwise I'd have to advise waiting for the price to drop. What's here isn't bad on its own merits, but its price really shines a spotlight on all of its weaker elements. 
I was hoping to have a stronger recommendation of this game, and it's frustrating as I really do think there's something here deep down. At bare minimum, I have high hopes for a possible sequel to polish up a lot of what's here. So that's my take on Taxi Chaos. Were you planning on buying it? Have you already done so? And if so, how are the other consoles versions of the game? Uh, let me know down below and do be sure to take care. And as ever, I'd like to thank my patrons for their support, with special thanks to Goldstorm07, Buckles Chucklo, Jeet, The Crazy Even, The Legend of Groose, Patrick Thompson, Svendelica, Wolf Chaosan, Joey, Harry, and Adrian. Thank you.